Here we are just 65 kilometers away from the busy port of Rotterdam in a small town of Bunich where we will meet Psyonix, a scintillation detector company nestled in the back of apple orchards and beautiful windmills. Let's meet the management. Okay, I'm sitting here with Paul, the founder of Psyonix. Paul, tell us a little bit how you got into this business. Well, David, thanks very much uh, for being here today with us. Uh, I started Psyonix uh, a little over 25 years ago uh, with a few colleagues. And uh, my interest in scintillation detectors goes back to my university past, where I worked on uh, the research on new materials. I started this work at the University of Delft. And uh, we started Psyonix in 1993. We gradually grew the company and we're trying to serve the community as well as we can with our knowledge on this fascinating material. Great. So you have a unique company in a sense that you do much more than just provide detectors and scintillator crystal materials. What makes you special when you think of companies in your space? Every, comp every scintillation material has its specific properties. And we try to take the best out of every material by offering our customers custom solutions in using the scintillator to its utmost capabilities. Paul, these are interesting products. What are some of the applications for these scintillators? Scintillators are used a lot more than you think, David. In our daily life, we don't hear much about them, but scintillation detectors are used in very many different application areas. For example, we use them in medicine, in nuclear medicine, to, to, to offer you the best treatment against cancer. We use them in geology to find minerals. Uh, we use them in the oil industry, science, and all those different disciplines have all different applications. And it's fascinating to talk to all people from those disciplines and discuss with them their particular requirements to which we try to offer the best solution with our scintillation detectors. Paul, scintillators are fascinating. What are some of the new emerging technologies in the field? Well, I see three major challenges in the near future. First of all, we have a new generation of high resolution crystals these days. Those are materials that are quite difficult to manufacture and quite expensive. We try to use those materials as well as possible by providing cost effective solutions with those new high resolution scintillators and crystals. This is one challenge. The other challenge I see is that we have new emerging technologies like silicon technologies to read out scintillation crystals like this silicon photomultiplier. And these kind of devices are quite different in their properties compared to classic photomultiplier tubes. It's a real challenge to design new sensors with that new technology and to see where they can be used as well as possible. And the third challenge is actually digitization. The whole world is digitizing. Digital electronics is quickly pushing away all classic NIM electronics. And so really a challenge to adapt our sensors to that new generation of electronics. This is all very interesting, Paul. Thanks for having me come and visit your facility. Our relationship has gone on for many years. Can you tell us a little bit about the high points of working with Berkeley Nucleonics in the United States? Well, the high points is certainly that we meet uh, fascinating customers and fascinating new applications. And we're very excited always when we hear about the requirement from you to start thinking about the question again and to try to offer the best that scintillators can offer us. So thanks again. Thanks again. Thank you.